Space Crusade takes you into warp space to fight the force of chaos. Deep in a parallel universe where nightmares are real. Space Crusade, the ultimate adventure game, where you must use all your skill and weaponry. Plasma gun! Dreadnought! To battle through infested starships and win the highest rank. The ultimate encounter is here. Space Crusade, now with a new adventure pack. Yes, yes, it begins. Okay, after long last, we've got our unboxing of Space Crusade, aka Star Quest. Yes, yes, after a long wait of a month, um, we've got our Space Crusade unboxing. I know I'm not the first, but it's the first for me. So, this game is also known as Star Quest from the makers of Hero Quest. And I'm going to be doing my unboxing here. And I'm going to have to make it quick because I got other things to do, but we'll do what we can. And I'll probably do a follow up video. <coughs> so if you're watching this now, this is probably not, uh, this is not a regular time. This is not live. So we've got the box here. And I'll just tell you the box. It's much thicker than the Hero Quest box. It's very sturdy, and it's got kind of a uh, textured matte surface to it. And of course, on the inside, you got the instructions. Now, I'm not going to assemble the whole thing because I just don't have the space right now. But later on, we'll try to do that. And the guy that sold this to me um, won't mention his name, but on Board Game Geek, he offered me a great deal. So here you've got the four boards, as you can see there. If you flip it over, it's just, it's almost just like, uh, it's not construction paper, but it's just like blue cardboard. It's kind of weird. And it feels a little cheap, but it's very sturdy. And so you've got these four boards. Each of them are let's see, 20 by 20 squares. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I'm sorry, 12. 12 squares, but you assemble like four of them together to make a square. So it's 24 by 24 squares. So I was thinking, gee, it's uh, smaller than HeroQuest, but HeroQuest is more like 19 by 26. Plus you got that huge logo. So this is a similar type of game to uh, HeroQuest. I'm not going to go to, into all the analysis because I just don't have time right now. Sorry about that. But some things are different in, in the rules. So you don't roll for movement, all of the characters. You control a squad of five space marines. And yes, this is loosely based on the world of Warhammer 40,000 to 40K, just like Hero Quest was loosely based on the Warhammer fantasy world. And this was a Milton Bradley game from 1990. These, these keep track of the body points or life points of your commander and the points that you earn. So yeah, it's from 1990, and each player... So one player controls the, the GM character. He's called the evil uh, alien, or the alien player, or the chaos player. He controls all the bad guys. So similar to Zargon or Morkar from HeroQuest. And again, I grew up with HeroQuest, and I didn't grow up with this game. So a lot of this is just me comparing to what I know to a game that I just recently acquired. I mean, I did as much research as I could. This is just kind of cheap... Uh, like candy box plastic is what I call it. I guess it's styrene. But so you control us, each player controls a squad. So you've got a Space Marine commander who has six life points, and then you've got four other guys who uh, each have one life point. Now it was never released in the US, so it's kind of like a European. I guess I could compare it to European HeroQuest, where a lot of the characters only had one life point. So there's the dice, they're white and red. Just like Hero Quest, except you're see you're not uh, you're not rolling to move. Everybody has fixed movement, and so there's guys that carry heavy weapons, and they have slower movement than the guys that have lighter weapons. So the only time you're rolling is when you do combat. You can either choose to shoot. So everybody has ranged weaponry. Well, except for with a couple exceptions, everybody has ranged weaponry, and you roll to uh, see if you hit your target. Um, so you can, as you can see, you can zeros, 
ones or twos but then the red the heavy combat dice these are the light combat dice heavy combat dice are red you've got threes ones twos um, everybody has an armor rating so instead of rolling for defense all you have to do is just see did I beat their armor rating okay fine I hit them and since everybody has one life point just about uh, you easily kill them now when you do hand-to-hand -hand combat which is adjacent you both roll so there's no like defense every both characters roll whoever gets the highest is the one that strikes so you could it's hand-to-hand -hand combat you you know you can overcome your foe much more easily but at the same time it's risky because they can hit you back and you'll notice in some of the pictures the picture on the back of the box is actually of the prototype so there's a lot of differences so these are the doors so again you've got cardboard doors but instead of opening the door you just pull it off the board that's it the other thing about the squad mechanics so each squad so you could have three players uh, blue red and yellow representing the ultramarines the blood angels or the imperial fists versus the alien player so it's actually a four player game instead of five like hero quest now there are expansions uh, this particular set that I bought, it does not include the extra box, but there is one of the expansions. There's two expansions and they're very rare. This is the Eldar Attack. So these guys are Eldar, which are space elves. And I'll just show you real quick here because time is fleeting. So I'm showing like a little slideshow there. You can see other pictures, but these guys have removable weapons. This is detachable. You be real gentle with it, but don't glue these down because they're just like little pegs and holes. And it's really easy to... And much easier to swap out weapons for these guys than it is for the mercenaries in Hero Quest. Because you had guys that you could hire that would have different weapons. Well, um, these are just slotted bases, see? A lot of people glued these down, so if you get a set, chances are it may be glued in there. Um, but yeah, because it's a European game, if you get from the U.S., it may cost you a lot. But I got a great deal, so I really want to thank the seller. He knows who he is. Uh, for offering me such a great deal. The other expansion is called Mission Dreadnought, where you get more Marines, so you can have, I think, up to six, or seven per team. Um, and you get these huge cannons that you can control. Oh yeah, this is a base wall base type thing. Now there is one piece in here that you'll recognize if you're a HeroQuest fan. This is HeroQuest fans after all. See this? This is the exact same mold for Wizards of Morcar. They had these magical barriers so you put the cardboard in. But So the Eldar, when they enter the board they have basically a door that they teleport through and then when they leave they have a door they teleport through. So similar to HeroQuest. But normally the Space Marines are the guys you control. Because you could have these guys. There's like a team of 10 of these guys and one commander. And he has one life point. But in, but the Space Marine commanders... See, again, I'm trying to go fast. The Space Marine commanders have six life points normally. But all of their guys only have one. The Eldar, they are all equal. They all have one life point. But the commander of the Space Elves um, is called an x arc He's called a patriarch in the German version. <laughs> I could have a whole video talking about the German version and all the differences uh, because it's almost like it's not quite its own game, but a lot of things are a lot of terminology has changed. Um, the leader of the, the space elves, when he takes damage, when he gets hit, he loses one of his. They're not called spells; they're called exarch cards. He's a psyker, so he has like mental powers. Um, so he loses one of those cards, assuming he hasn't used it up already. So again, it's similar to Hero Quest with the wizard having spells, except that every time he gets hit, he loses one of those cards. When he's out of cards and he gets hit, then he dies. But to win a mission, all you got to do is make sure your commander or your leader survives, and you get the points. But you lose points every time one of your guys gets killed, so you still want to make sure your troops survive. So these are the Imperial Fists guys, again remove the weapon and you can swap out so at the beginning of the match the beginning, of, the beginning of the quest or mission you decide like what uh, what weapons you want 
and we can slot those in. So this is like a heavy weapon. This is an auto cannon. It's kind of like a chain gun. I mean, there's there's all this lore that explains everything, but it's a simplified version of Warhammer 40k. But it's a dungeon crawler. You're moving around. You have these things called docking claws. So it's basically a little room that attaches to the edge of the board where you start. This is your commander. Notice how he doesn't have a helmet. I really think he ought to have like a bubble shield or um, force field or something over his face. It's like, protect your head, dude. So he's got a, a an axe, power axe, and a bolter, which is a little pistol. So they got the super armor. Now, of course... This was a game between Milton Bradley, owned by Hasbro, and Games Workshop. So, of course, they heavily promoted you buying extra miniatures, subscribing to White Dwarf Magazine, doing all kinds of add-ons. So I'm not going to show you every single one, but it's, it's, this is a complete set. And he threw in the Eldar attack expansion. The only thing it's missing is the box, because there's a miniature box for the Eldar, and you'll see a picture of that. And also there is one rank badge missing and one equipment card missing. So the Space Marines, each team of Space Marines, you've got your commander, okay? And he gets a certain number of order cards. So it's kind of like the combat cards for, from HeroQuest, that expansion. So he can play the order card and that gives a bonus to his squad, whoever's surviving. Or maybe it gives a bonus to himself. And there's also equipment cards. And the equipment cards, apparently, I think you get four of them. You start with four. And as you rank up, so if you, as you win missions, you get, um, you can get more. But um, the equipment, he, they can be played anytime, whereas the order, you can only play one per turn before you're, before you're, uh, before you do anything. And every figure gets to move and attack or attack and move. Okay, so the alien player, or the chaos player, he gets all these bad guys and I love these little bags. This is similar to what you probably get in the original game. Oh yeah, and this, there's a plastic tray in here that holds everything. And it's completely useless. The only thing that it does is it has a little space for the cards here. And i got to wrap this up soon. Sorry, folks. I'll do a part two of this for sure. So this is a space orc. It just spelled O-R-K instead of O-R-C. And they're pretty much what you'd assume. So they've got, again, familiar weapons. This is a bolter with a little bayonet on the end and a cleaver. But there's there's different ones. You know, they've got let's see axes and daggers and things. But they all have the same stats. Again, like Hero Quest, when you've got, you know, multiple monsters, but they have just different weapons for variety. Those marines. Oh yeah, and these are the blood angels. Now in the German version, these guys are have totally different names and everything, so. There's the Heavy Weapons guy, the Blood Angels team, the red team. Again, doesn't that look like a Hero Quest hero, that same color plastic? And they've all got these black bases. These are Games Workshop bases. Citadel Miniatures, same, uh, same thing. And Stephen Baker is, was the credited as the designer of the game, just like Hero Quest. So the Chaos player gets a wide variety of monsters. He's got the Orcs, and he's got. Uh, Chaos Space Marines. This is the commander of the Chaos Space Marines. And they, they again, they've got detachable weapons. Actually, that's, yeah, that's the commander, and here's one of the regular Chaos Space Marines. So you get a few of those. Kind of looks like a cross between Boba Fett and a Chaos Warrior. And, of course, this game, stylistically, so Space Crusade came after Space Hulk which was just the Space Marines fighting Gene Stealers for these mutant monsters. And it was a modular game similar to Advanced Hero Quest. Um, where are those guys? Um, so, so you had Space Hulk, and that came after Warhammer 40k, of course. So 40k came out in 87, way back in 87. and still going. This is a Gene Stealer. These were later called Tyranids, and then they were not Tyranids, and there's all this confusing lore. Every edition of 40k, they changed, changed what it meant, but you get a variety of those guys. And let's see, yeah, Mission Dreadnought was another expansion. But yeah, it was first Warhammer 40k, then Space Hulk, then Space Crusade. 
And there was another game called Advanced Space Crusade, which I know very little about. But I think that was also a modular dungeon type game. More like Space Hulk. And I think they remade it, Space Hulk in 2014. 2012, 2014. This is a Dreadnought. So it's a big Ed 209 looking monster, or like the Walkers from Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi from the Star Wars lore. And it has weapons that you can, again, you can choose what weapon you want. And they made it pretty easy to slip them on, so they just kind of clip on. But if you buy a set, they may be pre glued. And of course, they encourage you to paint it. Oh, there's one way on here. There, so there's your dreadnought. So this thing is really big. It takes up four squares on the board, and it's hard to destroy. But I feel like this game it it leaves a lot less opening for your imagination. So Hero Quest things were kind of vague. There was a lot of, I mean, they really encourage you to make up your own rules, and do your own thing, create your own stuff. Space Crusade, they don't do that, so there's no blank map at the end that shows you how to create stuff. That is called an Android. In the German version, they're called a... Yeah, they're still called an Android. Oh yeah, the, the gene stealers are called clones. Uh, with a K in the German version. And I can get more into that later. Oh yeah, somebody painted part of this guy. He's got blue pants. I really think he ought to have silver pants. Just kidding. Okay. Yeah, these guys were later called Necrons in the Warhammer 40,000 mythos. But there's a few of those guys. And the Mission Dreadnought, it has another one of these, but it's bigger. And it's got some of these guys, and it's got some more Marines. But really, if you go online, it's super expensive. It's like, I want to say $200. I mean, I got this whole set for, like, half price, basically. But it's... it's it's like I paid Hero Quest prices for this, so it was really good. And again, Board Games Geek, you know, it's made up of fans. They sell to each other. Not a endorsement there, but just letting you know. So if you've just been looking on eBay or Amazon for stuff, or rummage sales. I mean, if you live in the UK or the Netherlands or Germany or whatever, you're probably bound to have an easier time than I did. If you're a US fan. So you've got different clips to hold those. Cardboard wall bases and uh, door bases. So it's kind of lackluster, but I mean, it's a, it's like a sci-fi version of Hero Quest. But there's 12 missions in the standard game, and Eldar Attack adds four more missions. You could easily create your own missions. And there's a computer game that a lot of people say is better than the board game. But really, if you're a Hero Quest player, you're used to using your imagination. You're used to making up stuff, playing like a creative GM. And you can do the same thing here. It's just that they don't really hold your hand and guide you. You know, if you're a 10 year old getting this game, because it really was for 10 year olds. So instead of those hero cards, you got these that explain each team. Now, in the Eldar attack, you've only got four missions. In the last mission, uh, they give you the opportunity to have all three of these Marine teams and an Eldar team of five. So you're going to have a lot of good guy miniatures versus the alien player. And on the other side, it explains the commander. See how they? it tells you, like, if you've got this weapon, you these are the dice that you roll hand-to-hand -hand or firing. And then it tells you how many movement that you can do. And again, it's, it's fixed movement. So you can move up to that many squares. And I think they let you move diagonals, too. Which, for your quest players, like, what? You can move diagonally. These are the docking clamps so your team would start off in this space like clip to this to the edge of the board and it's just like kind of this rough blue on the other side and these are familiar but let me just show you a few other differences so the base game and the core game comes with this glossy shiny rule book let's see it is 21 pages and there's this little comic book story that is kind of interspersed with the the description of the rules explains. So it's two to four players. The alien player is the, like the Zargon type player. And there's a whole story which I'm going to save for the next video to read. But you've got these things called blip tokens. So remember how in Hero Quest you had to create the quest, you had to decide where all the monsters were on the board and everything? In this game, you don't do that. Instead, you've got these little tokens. 
So as the bad guy player, what you do is you've got all these little tiles. Now, you could say this is kind of a problem for the game because there's so many of these little tiles. If you lose them or if you're trying to collect it, trying to get them. I mean, I want to play this game, but okay. So you got these little things. And when the, the good guys, the Space Marines, enter a quadrant of the big board, they scan. So it's like the motion tracker from the Aliens movies. Um, they detect all these little blips. So he puts them out, the alien player puts them out, and they move on the turn. You don't know what they are, but then when, once they get into sight, because you use line of sight, you flip it over and go, oh, that's an android, and it's worth 10 points, if I'm reading that correctly. So you've got all these things. Now you flip one of these little tiny things over, because it only takes one square, and oh, it's a dreadnought, and <laughs> takes up four uh, squares, because it's supposed to be their technology is just detecting these little radar blips, and then, oh, what is it? Oh, it could be a Chaos Warrior, or Space Marines. Uh, Gretchen, that's what they call the Space Goblins. I forgot to talk about those guys. So you got Space Goblins. Kind of tongue-in-cheek, but they don't really go into a lot of the lore of this. This is kind of like, you could research it on your own and put Warhammer uh, 40k stuff in there. So there's a Gretchen. They're, they call that capering, where they do that kind of foot dance. Kind of a European thing. Look it up. There's videos of like cultural dances and festivals and things. But yeah, they got little guns and things like that. But yeah, Gretchen's. I don't know if uh, Stephen Baker was bullied by a girl named Gretchen when he was in school or... Nah, it, it wasn't him because he, he was just taking the existing lore of 40k and up making his own game. In uh, cooperation with the guys from Citadel from uh, Games Workshop. And it was, you know, I'm sure it was a collaborative effort. But it's this game is lesser known than HeroQuest. So you've got this mission book. So you got the rule book and you got the mission book. So again, similar to, I had the quest book and the rule book. And so there's spoilers. So you got these kind of hard to read diagrams. It's kind of small. Everything's kind of designed for people with small hands. So you think, okay, 10 year olds. So it gives you the storyline. And yes, the storyline is different in the German version. Talks about the background. And you've got your different weapons: the bolter, the missile launcher, assault cannon, plasma gun, and space hulks. So they still use the term space hulk, and it's not the Incredible Hulk. What it means is it's basically a ghost ship or a pirate ship. So the storyline is essentially that okay, it's the far future, and there's a galactic empire, and they've discovered warps warp drive and warp space so there's these big like whirlpools of space and these giant spaceships sometimes get lost in warp space this other dimension where the uh the chaos aliens or chaos gods live i mean they don't go into too much of this detail a lot of this is from 40k but uh they 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 they're gone for like centuries and then they come back out of the warp and all of a sudden the, the ship is all messed up and all twisted and it's full of these chaos monsters that you gotta fight. So it's kinda like <clears throat> you're the Roman legions going out and you're doing these boarding actions on these on these uh, ships and trying to wipe out the bad guys before they invade the Imperium the, the Empire of Man, essentially of mankind. It's all kind of tongue in cheek, but it's it's a mixture, it's a sci fi story, it's a mixture of like uh, Fantasy lore, like um, chivalry, and like space stuff, like Terminator and aliens, and obviously a lot of nods to Hero Quest that inspired it. So you got these other little tokens here. So you've got your primary mission. These are little bitty. So if you if you uh, have big hands and you trimmed your nails, it's going to be hard to flip these over sometimes. And you've got so the bad guy like you get points every time you kill a space marine. So you can go up ranks. Different rank tokens. And these honor badges that the good guys get. So you get these commendations in between uh, missions based on how well you did. So you kill monsters, you get points. You get killed, you lose points. And there's some debate online about um, the ranking system, whether it's really fair. Like, 
some people have said, oh, the odds are stacked in favor of the Space Marines or the Eldar player and against the alien. Which, it's kind of like with HeroQuest. I mean, Zargon could easily just murder the heroes, right? He has total power. He could do whatever he wants. But then the game would be over and nobody would want to play again, right? So he may adopt a strategy where he tries to make it tough for him, but he ultimately wants them to win secretly. So, I mean, you can decide what you want to do. But the the outcome of the game could be decided over the period of, of weeks, you know, of many games being played. The other type of tiles that the alien player has, and I'm going to have to wrap this up, are these reinforcement tiles. And I'm actually going to have to study the rules a little bit more to figure out how they work. Because you, you flip it over, and it's like, okay. Or I guess you start there, and you flip it over, and it tells you how many reinforcements you get. And the reinforcements show up. A lot of the missions are just kill all the monsters, or kill this specific monster, and then leave. But it could be retrieve this specific object, and whatever. But there's a lot of room for creativity. The player really could impose his own rules on the game, make it more interesting. You got these clips. So there's actually a section of the board that stands up in the middle, so it's kind of three-dimensional. It's got these plastic clips to hold it together. And again, I'm going to have to do another video to cover more of the detail. I'd like to maybe set it up a little bit and talk about it some more. Alien reference card. So familiar to Hero Quest players and tells you what each of the monsters can do. And it's just blue in the back instead of just plain cardboard. Here are the here are those walls I'm telling you about. So these can get bent up, but you set up set them up and it forms like an X or a cross. And then it looks like they could pass through the doorways. Yeah, looks like they probably could. So you got several of those. Yeah, a proper unboxing, I suppose, you take out every single piece and like rotate it and admire it. But I just don't have that kind of time. I'll have to do a part two, like I said. Let's see, we covered all that. We have the cards. So the cards are a little interesting because, okay, they're smaller than US game cards. So if you were trying to do custom cards, it would probably cost you a lot to make them exactly this size. They're like just a little bit smaller. But they've got kind of a matte, uh, kind of a, almost a textured surface on one side. Flip it over and it's got this nice, smooth, almost glossy, like a, like a new set of bicycle card surface. But it's the opposite because these are the base game cards. But the Eldar cards, they come with the Eldar set, are the opposite. Meaning they're glossy, smooth, shiny on this side, and you flip them over and they're textured on like the face side, if that makes sense. So here's your order cards. And it's all it's it's like the same image on every one but they did give you a unique image on the other side. So there's basically on one side there's a game description it tells you okay this is this is how it works in the game flip it over and this is like kind of the story version of it kind of uh, more of an in-universe kind of explanation. So you've also so you've got the order so there's one of these is missing but this could easily be reprinted. I mean I'm just going to copy the image and just retype the text. It's a uh, bisections. I think the bisections one is, is missing. So he'll pick an order card, and then he's got his equipment. So the blue team is supposed to be the balanced team, the ultramarines, whereas the red team, the blood angels, are supposed to be better at melee, at hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the imperial fists, the yellow team, are supposed to be better at like long-range fighting versus close combat. Mm -hmm. And that's our alarm. I'm sorry, folks. I'm just going to have to end the video here. There's the Blood Angels. And we're going to have to pick this up in the second video. And these are actually going to be premiered on YouTube on Friday. So if you're watching this now, of course, you already know. But, and it won't be live then. So the Alien Event cards are used by the bad guys. So this is kind of like the Evil Wizard cards for HeroQuest. So each turn he'll flip one over and, oh, one of the androids explodes. Or, oh. Um, you know, this happens. There's different events. 
so that's how. So, and he doesn't have to worry about, well, do I have monsters on the board or not? You can just do these things. And each expansion, of each of the two expansions adds new cards, new blip tokens, new characters. Or more characters than what you previously had. But I'm, I'm glad the Eldar one was included because, to me, that's, uh, that's the more interesting of the two. I mean, yeah, it'd be cool to have more, but it's kind of like getting Keller's Keep versus the Elf Quest pack, you know. So there's an extra little board to add. This is for the Eldar expansion. And there's a different reference card explaining what Exarch has. You know, they, they're they agile and uh, good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, but they're also maybe easier to kill in some ways. You got the tiles for the entry and exit doors. Basically, that's just a blip token. So it's like they teleport in. Because they're cool like that and then real quick and then I'm gonna end the video Let's see this, uh, oh yeah and it's got its own book too Let's see the, where's the Eldar book do it to the side somewhere oh yeah so you should like the Eldar cards and again it's shiny matte this matte texture is kind of like the box. It's kind of got this texture to it instead of being perfectly smooth, which I suppose re resists fingerprints. Makes it easier to shuffle. You know, it's like shiny one side and textured on the other. More alien event cards, but they've got a different logo, so it's easy to tell which is which. And all these cards, very European style. It's got like the white border or the black border. All right. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Like I said, this is kind of like a quick unboxing, so it's not super detailed. There's more doors. I'll show you those later. Yep, so we'll just uh, we'll wrap this up, and we'll talk with you later on HeroQuest Fans, and probably do a little bit of editing if we had any issues. Hopefully we didn't have any issues this time. Oh yeah, the very last thing is the Elder Attack book. This is really light magazine. I mean, this feels like the cover of like an 80s comic book. And it's still glossy pages. It explains the lore of the Eldar. So their civilization was destroyed. They went, they go around in these craft worlds, these traveling like planet, miniature planets basically. And they have no love for chaos and so they go and fight. And sometimes they'll fight by the side of space marines. Wipe out the chaos monsters, the aliens. As they call them. So that's Space Crusade. Oh yeah, with these, you're supposed to show what your weapon upgrades are with these little pegs, and then these little sliders control, help you keep track of life points and points, overall points. So no cheating. Alright, thank you. See you next time, HeroQuest fans, part two, unboxing Space Crusade Star Quest, 1990. Milton Bradley, Games Workshop, not joined after.